Welcome back guys and thanks for stopping by. So today I'm thinking about the camera settings and the color profiles on the Mavic 2 Pro. Which one's the best? We're going to find out today. So this is definitely going to be a discussion. This is definitely going to be a blue pill, red pill type discussion. There's going to be folks that want to just keep things as simple as possible. Go straight normal mode, put it out of the camera and put it, upload it to YouTube. And then there's going to be the other camp that just wants to go down the rabbit hole and see where it leads. So we're going to talk about both of those today. Neither one of those is right. It's just whatever your preference is. So there's kind of two issues that I think about when I think about setting up the color profiles and the camera settings on the Mavic 2 Pro. First off with the camera settings is I want to make sure that I set the camera up ahead of time so that I get that butter smooth 4K footage. The second issue or thing that I want to solve is how do I preserve the most detail in my footage? Now, whether that's the sharpness, whether that's the contrast, or whether that's the color, there's different things that you can tweak, or you might just leave it the same. So we're gonna find out, just by testing each, each one of those items, which one is the best, and which one can be the best for your situation. Because I don't think there's necessarily one setting that is the best, it kinda is whatever your preference is and what you're looking for in your footage. So I'll show you how to test it, and then you guys can make the decisions. Coming right up. Okay, so we are in the DJI Go 4 app for the Mavic 2 Pro, and I'm gonna show you how I have my camera settings set up for the best quality video. So I'm gonna go into the camera settings right here. All right, so in your camera settings, you just wanna choose M for manual settings. You wanna keep your ISO as low as possible. Changing the ISO is my last resort, so I always keep that at 100. My aperture in this case is set at 11. That is basically the highest, or actually the smallest I can go because it's getting pretty bright out here. And I do that because my shutter value at the bottom there is one over 50. And I choose one over 50 because that needs to be twice my frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. So if you choose 30 frames per second, you'd want to choose one over 60. And then, so the only other thing to change here would be your aperture to get your exposure correct. So this is why the ND filters are still gonna be important because you're at your max at 11. But 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, really the important thing here is to have it consistent with what your timeline is on your editing software. So if I am shooting at 24 frames per second, I wanna edit on a timeline that is also at 24 frames per second. Otherwise, you're gonna have a little bit of hopping as you're editing and playing your, your videos. That's all there is on this page. Okay, next go to the video, the video icon. Up here I go to 24 frames per second at 4K. I'll show you that up here. Now if you'll note in the background on my screen, you see the cathedral over there kind of in the top left of the corner. Right now I'm in 4K full field of view. I can also choose HQ and, and see how it crops in the cathedral there in the background. So you still have the option of shooting in two different 4K modes. They both have the same resolution, 3840 by 2160, but it is cropped in on this on this second one, so I just go to the, F, the full FOV mode. That's just my preference. Next one down, MOV. I shoot in MOV because I'm editing on a MacBook. I white balance. You want to set that to sunny in sunny conditions or cloudy in cloudy conditions. I'll leave mine on sunny for now. You don't want to use auto. Okay, next up is style. So currently I'm setting in a custom style of zero, negative one, and zero. You can also just choose standard up at the top. Those are both pretty good. And I'll show you how I arrived at the zero, negative one values coming up shortly. Next one down, D-Log. I'm shooting in D-Log M. You can also shoot in none. None is a really good image as well. I mean, it's honestly got really good color. I'll go to none right there. You see it's it's a, a nice, nice, nothing wrong with that image at all. All right, then your encoding format is H.265 because I'm using the D-Log M profile. All right, last one over here, the cog settings on the side. What I like to turn on to, that's important for getting shots for me is always to have my histogram on. It's nice to have a good marker to see if I'm overexposed or underexposed. Autofocus continuous, I turn that off. That'll keep you from the focus having the constant hunting back and forth, especially in low light conditions. It's just really a mess if you leave that on, in my experience. The only other thing down here, I like to have the grid turned on, and then the peaking threshold. 
you not you notice some red tints in my background there basically I can turn that on and it's on high which means it's very precise and you can turn it up a little bit to see more of it and then low kind of shows you everything that's in focus but I don't need all that red in my shots when I'm filming because it's confusing so I just leave it at high so you can kind of see things up close have red tints to them and then things in the background also do as well so it's generally in focus because I have my manual I have my manual focus set up here on the top right and it's basically set to infinity and I just leave it at infinity and I hit record from there there's really no need to you know to go in like this when you have a 20 millimeter lens on you know I just leave it at infinity so that is all there is double check make sure there's nothing else here that is all you need to do to get your camera set up so let's go into the color profiles so I've set up a repeatable litchi mission so that I can compare apples to apples while the drone is still moving when I'm trying to determine the sharpness settings for the Mavic 2 Pro I'm looking for signs of aliasing and moray and you typically see this with small patterns like bricks roof shingles or fences Luckily, I was able to find a good subject with all types of these patterns present. So first, let's look at normal mode, all zeros, and then let's compare that to D-Log M, also in all zeros, and see if we can tell any differences. Now let's compare sharpness values of negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, and see if it gets kind of mushy at negative 2 and negative 3. Okay, next let's compare plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3 sharpness values to see if there's any aliasing or more introduced when you increase those values. So I started this testing out thinking I would probably need to reduce the sharpening, but I just don't think that's going to be necessary in this case. I think I might just leave the sharpening at 0 or may even increase it by plus 1 without introducing any negative effects. So far it looks great. Most of my filming takes place right at dawn so I can take advantage of the golden hour light and because there are no people out on the streets to worry about. The challenge is to be able to preserve some of the details in the shadows without losing too much in the lighter areas. So let's compare D-Log M at negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 contrast values to see if we can bring back some of that detail. So here's negative 1 on the right hand side. You can already start to see a little bit more detail in the brickwork. It's a little bit lighter on the rooftop there, and you can also see some more details in the tree line compared to what's on the left-hand side in zero. Okay, so here's all three lined up side by side. I think I actually like the negative one better. It's, uh, it's, it's lighter, but not too light. If you look at negative two and negative three, there's definitely more detail there but again, this is just right after dawn, so there's really not much real light out there. And so I don't want to add too much artificial light. So I think I like the negative one the best in this situation. Okay, with saturation, I want to make sure that I don't pull out too much color. You can already tell when you compare it to normal that the D-Log M profile is very unsaturated at all zeros. But let me compare that with negative one, negative two, and negative three. Okay, looking at negative 2 and negative 3, they look pretty light compared to negative 1. So let me overlay that with 0. I think in this case, I'm just going to leave it at 0 on my saturation value. So guys, I hope you found the information that you were looking for on the color profiles on the Mavic 2 Pro. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. So let's get out there. Enjoy this awesome October weather. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.